Good day, everyone, and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. We're here every Wednesday live on Blab at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, and we are also available uh, via podcast and all those other fun things afterwards. So my name is Bob Woods. I am a social business strategist at People Links, and I am also co-founder and coach at Social Sales GPS. Fabulous. My name is Michael De Groot, and I'm a chief storyteller at StayingAliveUK.com, and I'm a blabber on SocialSellingWednesday.com. <laughs> <laughs> that works too. That works too. Go That's ahead, good. Ted. I'm Ted Pedromo, and I'm author of Ultimate Guide to LinkedIn for Business and Ultimate Guide to Twitter for Business, and also a coach at Social Sales GPS, like everybody else here. And I do a lot of online marketing for companies, online ads and building funnels and getting them more customers. Excellent, excellent, very good, very good. So um, we encourage people to pop us in with questions or comments in the chat window as we're going along as well as we do have one seat open right now if you want to take that uh, just via audio you can go ahead and do that and if you want to show uh, your face as well and audio obviously uh, feel free to do that by by taking the uh, the uh, fourth seat there we have one person that we can put in there to to chat with us and um, because this is this is all about chatting basically so we we definitely want to have a conversation with every one out there which is what social selling is all about is conversation so we definitely take that uh here it's, so it's not about chatting it's about blabbing blabbing that's right yeah you know so it's all yes it, well now it's all about blabbing i don't know if i went into a um meeting and said okay so gentlemen this is all about blabbing i i don't no, know if that would no. go over very well but uh, okay. but uh, definitely here it is definitely all about blabbing so feel free to blab away with us and um and right now, uh, the our show is kind of loosely formatted. Uh, first of all, each of us goes through and notes any changes that we've seen in LinkedIn in the past week, or if there's any bigger changes that we'd like to reiterate that, that have happened in the past couple of weeks. And then we all have, um, in the Just One Thing segment, our tips. Uh, we all have uh, one tip uh, for everyone that will hopefully help you build your business via social selling. So. Um, uh, Ted, would you like to go first with your with any changes that you've seen? Yeah, I just noticed that the pulse is gone from the menu, and I've been digging deep into that, and I can talk about more later. But you know, they have this content platform. They said they want to be the biggest co content management platform on the internet, and they have all this great content, and now they hide it from us. So I have seen a little bit more on 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 this just from various postings from 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 some of the other LinkedIn coaches and experts that I've been following. It seems that their game plan going forward is to integrate Pulse content into the news feed. Right. That's what they're doing essentially. So right. um, I I don't know if I like this idea. I don't know if it's a good idea, but that's definitely what they're doing especially because i mean i've i've gotten emails on it myself from from some people so this is something that's that's definitely getting noticed out there and um this this is one of those things where where, where i'm scratching my head because i don't know how i feel about it so i am most definitely open to other people's i mean i'm always open to other people's opinions about it but i mean especially now as i'm as i'm just trying to think you know is is this a good thing or not do, do you think it's a good thing ted no, I just did a little video yesterday on it. I was trying to find content in my news feed, and I had to scroll and scroll and scroll before I saw a Pulse post. And it was from Dr. Travis Bradbury, who is an influencer. Right. And a few years ago, they used to tell us exactly how many views each post got. And he had one post that was the most popular ever with over 2 million views. And he always got 100, 200,000 views on every post. Wow. Mm -hmm. I looked at his latest post. They have like 4,500 views. Oh. They're killing it. Yeah, they are. Killing it, not in a good way, because sometimes we say killing it here in the U.S., that's a good thing. It is not a good thing this time. They are definitely yeah. killing it. Uh, Michael? Yeah, they, they still have a new kind of looking format for Pulse. If you click on the link that I shared either in the window or the 
the chat box there, they still have this area which which looks you'll be familiar with it, Ted, looks very mm -hmm. much like the app. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's still there, but it's it's not it's advertising. Not, yeah, anywhere. yeah. I mean yeah, you have to know about it to get to it, basically. That's right. So which, why no. why not? If you if you wanted to not have pulse the way it looked before, but at least signpost people to this one because mm -hmm. it means people can be active and be browsing inside of that area and, and, and see what they want to read, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, really hard to subscribe to content and unsubscribe from content now. Oh, I hadn't noticed that. That's hard to find that. You have to dig deep. Oh, yeah. Then... I mean, yeah, I mean, just from that standpoint, yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. That's, uh, you know, and in this day and age with AI and data and all of that, you expect to be able to, you know, be able to 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 set your preferences and the the news finds you, right? Yeah. So the thing is, where do you set the preferences now? On your tablet, on your on the mobile app, which not everybody has. Right. So so is that Pulse app still active and available on everything? Mm. Yeah. Yep. But it's not that great. I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, inevitably, that's going to be retired and it's going to feature inside of LinkedIn, which it should be, right? I mean, yeah, on I LinkedIn, on the flagship app, that's where you get notifications when people publish a post now. Yep. Right. Uh, so why? Some of the time. And actually, when, when I get notifications, I switched off the notifications on the Pulse app because I got a notification that says Ted's published a uh, an article mm -hmm. and okay so I went okay well I've missed that notification so I go to the app to see where the notification is and there isn't one you can't right. see it right wow. so unless you actually slide on your phone when the notification comes on it takes yes. you directly to the article but otherwise you can't find it there's no other notification area inside the app but right. there are notifications flowing through in the flagship app. But again, if you're on top of it, you'll see it. If you're not, it's gone. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. something. That's cra <laughs> crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy and LinkedIn, awesome. unfortunately, have been kind of synonymous as of late. Um, yeah, so that's that's something. That's definitely something. And um, if we're done with that, and 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 I want to continue on with the speaking of a crazy thing, because there's something that I've noticed. It hasn't happened to me because I'm nowhere near this point yet. But uh, and I don't know if you guys have noticed this uh, because because we all tend to follow these same people. But it seems like in the past couple of weeks, um, LinkedIn is now uh, implementing a big I don't know if I'd call it a change because it's always been there, but they're starting to enforce something that they haven't enforced before. And that's, um, and that's, it's uh, LinkedIn is now enforcing its 30,000 member um, mm. threshold, yeah. which, um, which I mean, to be fair, it's always been there. So they've always stated that you can only have, or not only, I mean, 30,000 is a lot. So, <laughs> you know, you can have 30,000 members, uh, but having more is a uh, terms of service violation. But I mean, um, and, and and I've got several questions surrounding this, but I think that number one, just the way that they're doing this is, is most definitely wrong, as is with what, you know, a lot of what LinkedIn is doing is just has just been wrong lately but um but i mean they are now starting to come into people's accounts and and, and are just saying okay we are cutting you off at thirty thousand. anybody who has subscribed after the thirty thousand is now a follower basically so um yeah well, you, i mean you, you that action is just wrong yeah go ahead Michael. so does anybody know the reason i mean why is it um who thought of that number and said, this is the reason why we're doing it. You never get an explanation. Yeah, I don't know if it's arbitrary, if they're trying to limit sim uh, system resources or something like that or what. I mean, it just, it seems pretty ironic to me that a company that wants you to build your professional profile limits you in building your professional network, mm. I should say, mm. you know? I mean, mm -hmm. even though 30,000 is a lot, um, 
it's still kind of ridiculous in, in, in my view. Mm. And, 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 um, and, um, bamboo and I'm trying, and Rachel says, you know, maybe it has to do with calls and, and API restrictions, yeah. which I mean, I definitely think is possible, but the only thing that I would come back with is why are they doing it now? Why hasn't, if, if this is such a concern, why haven't they been doing this all along? Basically. I so, mean, yeah. Go. So here's the crazy thing. If you look at somebody who has millions of followers, right? So one mm -hmm. of these business celebrities, let's call them. Right. And you go to their profile. It has a follow button as the primary button on their profile. Mm -hmm. But there's also a little text bit that says connect and mm -hmm. you can still click on that. Now that individual, they've got millions of followers. They must have, you know, more than 30,000 connections. I would have thought they must have. So why still have that connect text button there? So yeah, the, I don't know. That's a good question. Consistency of approach you know, things aren't thought through. And this is the difficulty with LinkedIn, who we love. Yes, we uh, love LinkedIn. This is, is not a bad no session. There is joined up LinkedIn. approach, joined up thinking in terms of process. And that's a shame. You know, mm -hmm. a bit more transparency wouldn't go amiss either. Yeah. yeah, if anybody wants to chime in here too, we'd love to hear what you think about this. Because it's really, do you need 30,000 in your network? <laughs> yeah, so people, but and, why is there a number that limit? If you let it be go, some people would have a million people connected. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I I just jotted down a couple of questions, you know, resulting from, from this that came up literally just off of the the top of my head. So that includes: Do most people need thirty thousand members? How can a person listen to thirty thousand? connections that I don't get. And then more important for social sellers, how do you build relationships with 30,000 connections? Yeah. I mean, that would be kind of tough, which I mean, I honestly don't think that, you know, unless you're, um, you know, unless you're somehow identified as the, the number one LinkedIn coach ever, 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 ever you might approach 30,000 connections. I'm not sure. So, but I mean, yeah. but I think that that comes down to just more of a question, you know, how do you build relationships with, with, with so many people, which we all know how to do that, obviously, but um, you know, it's just one of those mind blowing figures, 30,000 people. I had a guy call me yesterday. He cold called me. And he's talking about the software they developed that could send 100 to 150 invitations a day and then send messages to people all day mm -hmm. long. And I'm like, you're going to get that's black hat. You're <laughs> going to get banned from LinkedIn. You're going to get so many I don't knows. Yep. You're going to get shut down in a couple days. Yeah. I exactly. don't know. We've had lots of success and it's only $2,000 a month for the software. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all. Yeah, that's where do I sign? I can yeah, pay oh my god, dollars to ban my LinkedIn account. <laughs> yeah, listen, our colleague Vivica has 30,874 connections. Wow, okay, so Vivica, yeah, I mean, Vivica, I can I can understand because uh, we have a couple of, of of queens of LinkedIn on our uh, on our social sales GPS staff and 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 she is is definitely one of them so I get Vivica having having that many people um, in in her network I, I wonder if she's been cut well obviously yeah, she, she actually was, hasn't actually. been cut oh she was yeah. cut back I was on LinkedIn chat with her last night and one of the people on there got kicked off as a connection of hers and they're just following her now uh, so Vivica had to go unfollow some people so she could add so she, she could really wanted to connect with yeah. yeah yeah and actually there is that aspect to this whole thing too i mean uh the these people with 30k now need to go through and and you know um downgrade people and then reconnect and all that stuff too and that's just there's just a lot of stuff wrong with this basically yeah so something like twitter list that's a great suggestion there yeah yeah, to, lists on Twitter. Yeah, as we've we've been pushing uh, Twitter lists pretty hard here uh, in in the past several weeks. We we all love that here, and uh, Twitter lists are fantastic, basically, especially because they're unlimited. So I, in terms of how many, well, they're not unlimited, 
but there's like a ridiculous number of lists that you can have basically. So, so unlike LinkedIn, you don't really need to worry that much about running out of space essentially, basically. So, yeah. um, in the, terms of making the tagging system inside LinkedIn is ever since they made the changes is very, very unstable now. So when, you, okay. yeah, when you want to sort on a tag, um, which is essentially the Twitter list uh, yeah. scenario, right? When right. you when you tag somebody, then they're all in a tag. They're all in that group, and when you then filter on that, it just mm -hmm. doesn't do it. It just yeah. it just doesn't. When the when the page refreshes, it just defaults back to, you know, your current connections or your latest connections. Uh, very, very frustrating. It, it used to work beautifully before, but it's just broken now. Broken. Mm. This anyway. kind of reminds me of, well, one thing, Perry Marshall, years ago, he's a Google AdWords expert. Mm. Ten years ago, mm -hmm. he says, you can't put all your eggs in one basket because if you have all your traffic coming from Google AdWords, they make a big change, your business is out of business. So mm. yep. LinkedIn is going through that now, so we need to use all of our social media resources. Yeah. LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, there's, uh, I've, I've been, and 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 I was actually going to log into this this week to see what it's all about. But there are some people who, who in response to you know some of these people saying you know thirty thousand members, blah 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 blah, you know they've been complaining about it in their uh, in their status updates. There's a service out there evidently called BB, so B E B E E. I have no idea what it's all about. I don't know if either one of you have seen it, but people are starting to talk that up. So um, I, I was I was gonna I was gonna take a look at that a little later this week just to see what it's all about. Well, and come I, and tell us about I, it next week. No idea. Yeah, I definitely will. That's your mission for this week. My mission. Accepted. <laughs> Pokemon Go is the next social. So oh, oh, Pokemon Go. Oh, 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 oh my God. My God. It's, it's yeah, it's, 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 if you want to get robbed. Yeah. It's just landed in the UK a few days oh. ago. And <laughs> there are these hordes of people walking the streets now. And um, the other day I saw this, this young couple in a car driving down a street and then they stopped suddenly. And this guy is pointing his mobile phone towards the window. He wasn't taking a photograph of the street. I know what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> he found a pokey spot or whatever it's called. Right. <laughs> it just, it's going crazy over here now. Hey, at least people are getting exercise now. I mean. This is, this know. is. This As is one like of the things, but of vitamin course, vitamin D. But yeah, I, like, I didn't realize that you could request a spot, a hot spot, yeah. or whatever mm -hmm. it's called. So, yep. for small businesses, especially retailers, yeah, retailers, yeah. This, you know, on the high street or in malls or wherever, they could create mm -hmm. a hot spot outside of their store yeah. and get people. Yeah. You know, so and and I know I think was it McDonald's and Starbucks and all of these guys are claiming these hotspots and people are right. going there. I, I mean, what 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 is the, what's happening over there? Are people saying it's going to last? It's going to die? It's it's a it's a. It's uh, definitely taken off huge here. I mean, there's actually been and 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 Lexington, Kentucky is just like a mid-sized market. So I mean, but there but there are hordes of people out right now, especially with with the University of Kentucky being here and all. And and I mean, even though you know it's it's on summer break, they they still have classes and things like that. So so you see students going all around town. You have restaurants and bars buying these um, the hotspots or whatever you call them and. Right. Um, um, and uh, some, yeah, it's pokey spots or whatever. Oh, that's a good idea to call it. And um, and uh, they've been running stories about how businesses have been increasing by like fifty percent, seventy five percent, you know. And they're also starting wow. to build, um, you know, repeat business from it because they're offering, you know, you know, ongoing specials for, you know, for people who come in. And you know, for that B two C segment, I think it's a great idea. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It could it's actually probably huge in San Fran. It could help the economy, yeah. right? It could really boost yeah. the economy of the country. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So I had um a new thing I discovered on LinkedIn. I don't know if you've noticed. 
if you go to your messages inside the desktop, it it tells you, uh, hello, Michael. Hel welcome back, Michael. Here are some ways you can reconnect with your network today. And it just shows two little cards with somebody who's got celebrating anniversary or it's their birthday. So if you if you jump to your messages right now, unless you haven't had the update, mm -hmm. you get this notification. I don't have it yet. No. Yeah, I saw I don't have it yet. I'm just seeing messages. So yeah, I don't have it yet. So that's interesting. Yeah, so they're they're integrating what you normally see on the network inside messages now. Mm -hmm. So whenever you go back to messages, you get a few more cards pop up. So, which is pretty similar, although it's not in the same place in the way the app works, because both on the on the app and now in messages, you only get a few cards. You don't get all of them like on the on, on the network, where you see all the cards people who have birthdays and anniversaries. But in the on the app, you don't see every single person. You only see a few every time you go back in. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the new thing that I've seen this week. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. That's interesting. I wish I I wish I could see it. Um, but you know, if you have thirty thousand connections, that's not so good. But anyhow, no. I'm just joking about that. It's a lot of birthdays. <laughs> it's happy birthday. It's too. a lot of yeah. It's a lot of birth. A lot of copying and pasting uh, to to do there. So that's good. That's funny. Okay. So. Um, Again, we are we're we're still looking for someone to pop into that uh, fourth seat. If you'd like, uh, you can do it via audio only, or if you want to do it audio and video, we would love to see you and uh, and chat with you about um, about things social selling, LinkedIn, Twitter, social in general related, and all of that type of thing. So, uh, with that in mind, it's time for the just one thing segment. Uh, who wants to kick that off? Go ahead, Michael. Okay, I so I, I just need to go back to my what I put. Yeah, so, um, hmm. Mm. So, I'm, I, I had a few interesting experiences in the last week with people who, I've got quite a few pending invitations where people have asked to connect with me and they just send a standard invitation, right? which I, I don't connect with them anymore. I don't accept them. I send them a really nice message back. And this is, this is what the message says. So you say, you tell me whether you, you think it's, it would, it would um, allow you to then inspire you to respond to me. So it says, hello, let's say Bob. Thank you so much for the invitation. When we get invitation to connect here, we always wonder why, don't you? And I've always been very curious about what makes people tick and how they decide to connect to people they don't yet know. So I was wondering, what inspired you to connect? Do let me know. So, so that's end of that paragraph. And then I go, do let me know if you think this article is helpful to you. And I then share a, um, a URL, which is customized like a bit.ly link. And it says why you should personalize. Then I have a wonderful day, day, emoji with sunglasses, and that's what I send out. Do you know that I only get about 1% that actually come back and respond to that? They go, go, oh, yeah, Michael, you know, this is the reason why I want to connect. You know, I saw your profile. This now we're connected to somebody. No, like 1% get back. Wow. So after about three weeks of not getting any responses, I just ignore, 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 ignore. I just get rid of them now. And yeah. it, it doesn't help my 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 numbers to get to 30,000, which I'm not that interested in achieving. But <laughs> um, so so but then I did get a couple of responses. So I got all excited. And the one sent me first one, first of all, said, uh, and you'll know why. Uh, let me just find it. It said, um, this was from Wolfgang. I won't say his name, a surname. And he said, Mr. Spencer. And then he obviously pasted this text and then, oh, God, oh. I sent it to Mr. Spencer. 
I'll quickly <clears throat> change it. I'll now call it Mr. Michael, spelled incorrectly as well, exactly the same. So I have the two email kind of pictures coming to me one after the other. So the big thing for me again is please, 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 please avoid pitching the minute that you connect with people. And in fact, this guy hadn't even connected. Right. I, asked, I asked for him, why do you want to connect with me? And he immediately pitched to me. The other one, I, I kind of got myself in a right kind of discussion and backwards and forwards messaging. And he sent me, so I, I, I sent him this thing. And I, I also mentioned something about his photograph because this guy had a photograph on his profile. And I just didn't want to connect with him because of his photograph. It was all like he was in a haze. So message again, the importance of a profile photo. Mm -hmm. I said to him, what's happened to your photo? You look like you're some sort of, you know, stalker kind of. I didn't use those words, but anyway, he came yep. back with about a 600 word response. Oh no. And <laughs> Uh, give me all sorts of reasons why he had that profile photo and then sharing with me where there was another profile photo on the about me page and so we entered into a whole kind of discussion i said well that one looks better actually so he then changed it but there were some other things that i want i wasn't entirely happy with so mm -hmm. i didn't connect with him in the end but it, sometimes i just kind of despair because i don't know so my view, my, my conclusion, why I think that people do not send personalized invitations, I think I've got the answer now. It's Facebook. I blame Facebook. <clears throat> because on Facebook, you can just click on anybody and invite, a invite them to connect with you as a friend. Mm -hmm. There's no need to say why you want to connect with them or anything like that. And because so many more people are on Facebook compared to LinkedIn, everybody's been used to just doing that. So they just do the same on LinkedIn. So it's actually made me more relaxed about the fact when I get invitations that are not personalized, I kind of go, oh, just relax. They're just following the Facebook method, you know? So um, anyway, so the, the message really after all that story is, still my mantra about personalized invitations and if you do get a message to say why if you didn't do one you know answer it right yeah Don't be shy yeah well i do think that part of that has to do with linkedin's um linkedin's inner or linkedin's um ux process when it comes to you know finding how to personalize connections, blah, 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 and things like that. It just makes it way too easy to connect from other areas of of the site. So, I mean, there is some education that we all do, but I mean, you know, always, 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 always connect from the profile. I mean, that's just because you can personalize a connection from the profile. Even if you see something else pop up and you actually know the person and you want to connect, don't connect from anywhere else within LinkedIn except for the profile. And the, it's a shame because in Sales Navigator, it's automatic. It automatically yes. pops up. And mm -hmm. why it doesn't do it everywhere across standard LinkedIn, it mm -hmm. just shows us again that it's broken. <coughs> Something is yeah. broken. There's no joined up thinking there. Mm -hmm. It popped up LinkedIn. yesterday. On the mobile app, I sent an invitation to someone and it popped up and said, do you want to send a personalized message? I didn't have to go to the three dots. What? That that's was, interesting. That's, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that is you know, sometimes it makes you wonder are they wait, are uh, they wait, really wait. trying to push um mobile development more, which which I think in terms of the Microsoft merger, I don't know how how that's how that's gonna work because you would think that Microsoft would want to concentrate more on the desktop than on mobile, but I could be wrong about that. Um yeah, like so to, that's I like to hear from people on the call here. Do you accept invitations? Is it important to you to have them customize the invitation? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Some people yeah. don't care. Some people do care. It's... I care. Yeah, I think that yeah. some people, yeah, I care. I I definitely use it as, as um, 
as a qualifier to see if I want to connect with, with, with someone or not. But, um, but I mean, but, but like I said, because of the uh, user experience, when it comes to um, writing a, the bad user experience, when it comes to actually writing a connection, I don't, I don't use that qualification alone. Basically I do, I do combine it with, with other things. So where, where did you, when you connected with somebody, uh, when did it pop up on the, when you clicked um, the, Yeah, it was a woman that was on the tweet chat last night, so I wanted to connect with her on LinkedIn, so I searched for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just said, invite to connect. And then it popped up and said, do you want to send a custom message? Did you click the, did you click the connect button on their profile? Yeah. Yeah. And it okay. actually opened up. And then it required an email address for her. She had her profile set that way, so I couldn't connect uh, with her. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to try one now and see what happens. Oh, no. That's funny. I, I just clicked connect, and it just said invitation sent. OK. So it didn't give, didn't give me the option. You didn't get so. that update yet. No, not yet. Not on the app. So yet. yeah, yeah. So so they do the slow rollout thing even on on mobile. That's 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 actually good to know too. It yeah. um I I guess it depends on well, how would that work with mobile? I mean, would that come via just an update of the actual mobile app, or would they? I don't know. Anyhow, yeah. but it would be but update that's, of the app. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a techie question, and, and and if there's one thing that most of us are not here, our tech. So, um, so so we can go ahead and, and move on from that. So, um, Ted, what's your just one thing? Well, back to that a little bit. Personally, if somebody sends me an invitation and they send just the standard image, I look at their profile. I always look at the profile on the desktop. A lot of times, you click and it just sends that invitation. And you're like, oh, I want it back so I can customize that one. Yeah, exactly. So I look at their profile too. I don't automatically reject everybody, but mm -hmm. obviously you can tell if they're going to be a spammer. <laughs> a lot of times, I want to connect with you with a six hundred word message. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So Ted, what is your tip for the week, or 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 your just one thing you want to bring up? Ah, uh, the one thing I've been really this week I've, I've been having like themes focused on one thing for the week. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's that's a great way to go. It's been Pulse. I'm like, okay, I'm posting this content on Pulse. Is it worth the effort? And then how do I get more people to view it? Mm -hmm. And it really is if you do a status update after you do a Pulse post, more people might see it in the news feed. And then yeah, I'll queue it up in my sendable. So it goes off like once a month, I'll send that out again. Mm -hmm. And that drives yeah. to it. Yeah. And and, and I do think that having multiple channels just for your content is always a good thing too. I mean, especially the way LinkedIn's publishing has 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 been going lately. I mean, when when I first started this this big push in into social selling, I was pretty much exclusively just on um, just on LinkedIn, and then I and then I went over to business and community. Uh, I, I have a bunch of stuff published there. I'm always looking at Medium in terms of, of, of publishing too, because that seems to get a lot of um, that seems to get a lot of SEO juice over there as well. And I mean, you know, as 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 long as you're saying somewhere within the article that it was originally published somewhere else, that shouldn't hurt you in terms of um, in terms of SEO. And uh, but I mean. You know, again, it's it's actually more of a case of of that all of your eggs in one basket thing, um, more than more than anything else. You know, including LinkedIn shortcomings when it when it comes to that. Just get as just get as much exposure, ex get as much exposure as possible for your content. Yeah, I I have um, just discovered. Um, Ted and I talked about this a few weeks back that. I'm now published on Apple News, right? Mm -hmm. So anybody can get onto Apple News. But my website, my blog is with Squarespace.com. Uh, and Squarespace have just released an Apple News syndication. So whereas before, I had to type and duplicate the whole blog post inside mm -hmm. the Apple News publisher bit, which mm -hmm. isn't a very good interface. Mm -hmm. um, today, I've been able to syndicate from Squarespace, 
directly to Apple News, which is just awesome. So I only need to write my blog in one place and automatically pushes it out to Apple News, which is mm -hmm. incredible. Nice. So this, you know, which is um, another way of getting a bit of exposure in a different place. And the other place that I think more and more people are looking at is Medium, of course. Yeah. Where, you know, I've got the app and I've switched off notifications on my phone, but I've got notifications on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And the people or the subjects that I follow, there's notifications popping up all the time. Mm -hmm. and, or people publishing stuff. And you can see that the views that people are getting on some of those are much higher now than polls. Yeah. And, and so LinkedIn, have, they're losing out really on eyeballs. And this is the one thing they've always needed is to get more people looking at their site because there are ads there. And Mr. Ad on here knows that we need people to on LinkedIn. Right look at your ads right and yeah. pulse, pulse was one way to get people to the site so they mm -hmm. could discover ads yeah and, uh, anyway yeah, yeah no, there are many good... other places now where we need to curate our content so that we are going to be noticed in other places and pulse looks like it could well be not the place to be for the future but for now still continue with it uh, but also check out these other places, especially Medium. Especially Medium, yeah. I mean, uh, my I was, I've been I've been publishing a bit sporadically lately. Maybe uh, probably because of vacations and stuff more than you know vacations and broken toes and things like that more than anything else. But um, but I mean, my the the order of what I used to do in terms of publishing in, in terms of channels was it, it was always LinkedIn first and then business to community and then some of these other places. Um, I think I, I think from from now on it's probably going to be like you know probably the People Links blog first, then Medium like almost immediately, then you know somewhere further down the line Pulse, especially because people are having trouble finding it a anymore and trying to jam in all all of these Pulse posts into into someone's news feed and just call them today. I just I don't the the more I think about it, the, the more I do not think that that's a good strategy. No, no. by LinkedIn. So, okay, good. So my just one thing has to do with um, LinkedIn headlines. And earlier this week, I shared an article from, from HubSpot about, you know, and it was entitled something. In fact, I've got it right here. Let me bring it up. Or no, I thought Did I Did you share it, it in the, in the uh, text feed? Yeah, let me, let me get to it really quick here. Uh, I'm going to do just an activity. Where did it go? Four secrets to writing a no fail LinkedIn headline. So there is one thing that I actually did not notice when I was reading the article. So a vast majority of the article is very good. It's what I teach in terms of, especially in terms of, you know, leading with your value proposition. So in, in other words, what do you bring to the deal? What do you bring to anyone who communicates with you? What is your specific value pro proposition? Um, one thing that they had said that I actually don't agree with is um and where'd that line go i'm going to scroll down to it um to make it easier here's a simple formula so job title colon helping x to do y um you've only got 120 characters in that sucker you're going to have your job title in other areas mm. of your profile don't put your job title in there i mean people are i mean think about it do do people really care about your job title when they first go to your LinkedIn headline or do they care about what value you can potentially give them so I mean especially because like I said you've got 120 characters devote that to your value proposition plus if the word sales or any sales connotation is in your headline I mean 
listen, a vast majority of uh, salespeople are good, kind people, and we don't mean to do evil. But there are still some salespeople out there who definitely keep up the negative stigma that all salespeople have uh, tagged on them, unfortunately, because of these few, you know, finger snapper type of people, basically. Who's so, car salesman. Yeah, yeah, car salesman type. I, 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 exactly. So, I mean, you know, don't, you know, sales in a headline to a lot of people is a turnoff. So, you know, just uh, devote all of that space to your value proposition. That's that's that, that's kind of my tip for, so, for the week. So have you written an article about headline at all? Um, I have done, yeah, I I have written articles in the past about headlines and and I have mentioned that as well. Um, maybe it I should- It would be cool because what would be, what would be even better is to share your perspective of it rather than HubSpot if they've got some errors in there. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, if they've, if they've got some stuff in there that is not advisable, mm -hmm. then let's let's share your article with people. Yeah, um, let me see if I can figure out where that was. That was. Can I share a little story article. with you? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, we love stories. Well, I'm scrolling. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, for years I've been teaching that. Put your USP or your value proposition in your headline. I had mine for years. This week I said, let me change it up. So I okay. started, I just put some keyword phrases in there. Started with LinkedIn lead generation. Three people have contacted me since Monday afternoon. Said, can you help me with my LinkedIn lead generation? <laughs> wow. Wow. And before that, with my value proposition, not one person ever messaged me and said, hey, can you help me with LinkedIn lead generation? So I'm okay, really thinking, rethinking that strategy now. Well, what did it say before, Ted? It was just something about, gosh, I don't even remember what it was. Okay. Shortening the sales cycle using sales. I don't know. Okay. A lot of people liked it. I you know, shared it with a lot of people. Oh, that's great. I know exactly what you do. So you're actually back to a bit more of of Keyword. that older style of of, of keywords in your um in in your headline, which which in like, you know, 2009, 2010, 2011, that's what a lot of people were, were, were doing back then and, and, and being successful with it. It was your skills, basically, you were putting in there. That's right. right. Skills. Right. And I went against that. I said, that's like throwing spaghetti at the wall. It's not focused. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And here I go. <laughs> oh, yeah. What all of us say, basically. Well, that's it. I mean, I mean, you know, that's actually kind of a form of that uh, proverbial marketing, you know, A-B testing basically and and so far it's, it seems to be working for you so that's interesting yeah so we'll see i'll, I'll really report on that and see what happens oh, do you keep us posted yeah that's absolutely great. so that's on your list to do my list to do is check out bb we need something to give michael what do we give michael <laughs> <laughs> what's his task going to be for next week we'll figure out something i i tell you what i'm going to check out um somebody mentioned to me i'm just going to See if I can find it. Sure. Uh, and I'll report back on that. Have you heard of Hatchbuck? Hatchbuck? Yeah, Hatchbuck. B U C K. Yeah. Okay. I'll, no. I'll share the link. No, I'll, I'll hatchbuck.com. Hatchbuck.com. So they're a hot a blah, hub spot lookalike. Hmm. There are, there are, so. This was a social sales GPS coachee that I had on. And I think they are uh, either less expensive than HubSpot or so this, this lady was teaching people how to use Hatchbuck. So I'll, I'll go and have a look around on that and do a comparison and report back on that next week. Yeah, tip number one for them, change the name. Of the company. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what that means just, just <laughs> by looking at it. <laughs> well, but of course, HubSpot makes perfect sense, right? HubSpot, HubSpot makes fantastic sense. Yeah. It really does. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> 
so I think we're about ready to wrap it up. If anyone has a question, uh, please put it in chat. We are always looking to fill that fourth seat. Don't be afraid, people. We do not bite, I promise. It's a, it, oh, it's, it's yeah. a very life fun type of uh, discussion. And, um, you know, we, we may have one or two pop quiz type questions for you, but what we I promise, tell you what the be benefit there. is of coming into a seat. Your name will be attached to the replay of this lab. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, that's which a means really you, good point. Yeah, which means you'll be seen in wherever. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, an but, excellent, excellent point. So you'll feature as one of the speakers on the blab. Yeah, and that's that's a great way to get get your name out there too. Yeah. So uh, Rachel, pop in. Rachel, is anything you want us to research for next Rachel. week? Type it in there. We'll yeah, exactly. Reason. Yep. Yep. And 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 remember, you don't have to. Um, you don't have to uh, show your face. You can you can come in via audio only. So no, so no. Don't let that be a deterrent. No, we want to see no. people. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, ideally, but you know, okay. if if you got someone, and and actually, that that reminds me of a story. Um, Back when I was first learning about Blab, and this was geez, just about like seven, eight, eight months ago, I, I was invited by someone else to just attend a Blab session. So mm. it was it was like eight or nine a.m. I was barely awake. I work out of my house. So I was just like in a T-shirt. I hadn't shaved. I think I had a hat on at, at, at that point because my hair was longer. It was you just a mess. So I just, yeah, exactly. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um so anyhow so they're all talking and things like that and then all of a sudden this guy says and bob woods is with us he's he's a linkedin expert blah 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 and everything else bob why don't you pop in and i just kind of looked at myself and i and 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 back then i didn't know that you could do audio only so um I just looked at myself and I was like, there is no way I'm showing myself looking like this right now. So, so that's one thing that I always learned was that whenever I attend a lab session, whether, you know, I'm hosting or if I'm just going in there, always be prepared to go on air because you might, oh, we've got you one. might want to, uh, because you might actually want to go on air. So, so look good. So I have a feeling that Will Morrissey, who's coming online, he's going to look good. He's going to look good. He does look good. Excellent. <laughs> thank you. How are you doing, Will? I just wanted to uh, thank Ted. I've uh, got a Yay! book. Yay! <laughs> and, uh, I've been reading it and have uh, implemented quite a few things. I just wanted to say thank you, Ted, for all the, all the uh, good information you have in your book. Oh, well, thanks, good. Will. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> you know, so, anyway, you wanted somebody to, pl uh, to play, so I've played. <laughs> ignore that chapter on the, ignore my chapter on the professional headline and just <laughs> right yeah. yeah update update on the professional headline chapter always be testing <laughs> all right i'll catch you guys later all right thanks. Thanks, thank well, you well thanks. your name is now on the blab well yes done. it is thanks well bye-bye so maybe next week we'll have more people uh yeah you actually need to hang uh you need to click that top I can hang you up too. Well, sometimes that there we go. Okay, doesn't good. work. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, it's it, it's weird sometimes. So anyhow, well, it has it has been a very successful show now because we've had a guest on. So um, so I think with that, uh, let's let's go ahead and wrap up. So again, Social Selling Wednesday every Wednesday here on Blab. You can get to us at socialsellingwednesday.com. We are live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, wherever that is in your part of the world. That's cool. And um, we definitely encourage audience participation. So uh Come to listen, come to learn, come to chat, come to have fun. Actually, man, that, that's a great tagline. We should use yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Remember what you just said. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So It's recorded. Um, yeah, and, and, and it's recorded. So if you're catching us on a recording, please feel free to join us live as well. So for Ted and Michael, I'm Bob. We'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye. See you next week. Thanks, everybody. Good luck. <laughs>